All right, so the uh, my buffer is all put together. Um, I put the VNCs in the front, input output. Uh, nothing else works except for the uh, power switch. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the rest of the buttons, but uh, it is what it is. So let's uh, let's take a look inside. Power cords just pull on it here. All right. I took a couple of still photographs when I was doing the construction. I decided to use this uh, 50 ohm semi rigid uh, coax that I had. Uh, so you can see the assembly over there on the left. I'm going to add the uh, add the coax. Uh, the coax is a little weird to strip. You have to use an X-Acto knife and kind of split it open and uh, pull it apart. And, uh, but I think it's all silver plated. It's really nice stuff. See so here I've got the input and output connected and I've got the two braids which are going to be grounded. I've got those uh, soldered together. And here's what it looks like all put together. So the uh, braids end up going onto that black wire that's a ground and uh, I have the plus or minus 15 hooked up. So it's on a uh, TO3 heat sink. I have the uh, 50 ohm load resistors and uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitors as per the data sheet. That was the, that was the circuit, uh, plus minus 15 and uh, ground. And then I have a coax um, left over from my uh, delay line project or my uh, uh, load, right? My 50 ohm load project had all that coax left over. So I used that here and it goes out to the BNCs. So seems to be, seems to be functional. So it's actually running. I'm um, getting a nice looking uh, focus, uh, getting a nice looking uh, pulse out of it. So we can, uh, let me, oops, I got to get by the camera here. All right, so we're getting a, a good looking pulse out of it. And we can turn on the uh, pulse. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is actually, this is actually input. So this is out of my... Um, uh, this is out of my pulse generator, which has an amazing uh, drive circuitry in it also. If you take a look at the, uh, the output drive section of the uh, 33120, uh, you'll be very impressed. They spend a lot of time and energy on the output section of the thing. So it's, it's probably way better than that LH63 used to be. Um, so that's one of the reasons you, you, know, you get what you pay for in that thing. It's got a really, really heavy DD drive section in it. And it looks very similar to the uh, topology that the uh, 0063 uses. So anyway, uh, so this is the pulse that it's outputting into 50 ohms. There's a 50 ohm load here. And it's measuring about 16, 16 and a half, 17 and a half nanoseconds. So we have 16 and a half nanosecond rise time. Let's see if the LHO 63 can keep up with that. All right, so. Let's see here. Let's take that and put it on the input. And then we'll uh, take the output, put that in the scope, and yeah, a little tiny bit of ripple. A little, little tiny bit of ripple. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. I actually say it's a uh, it actually drives into 50 ohm load, the load a little bit better. It's not as, um, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, let's see, what, what is it measuring? It's measuring 20 nanoseconds, so it's a tiny bit slower. Tiny, tiny bit slower. But if it can keep up with that 33120, I'm really, really happy. So I'll be able to use this uh, buffer box for projects where I have a circuit and I want to drive something. I want to drive a motor or a capacitive load or inductive load or a length of coax or whatever. Uh, this buffer is going to be able to do that. It's going to be uh, pretty heavy duty. So yeah, looks pretty good.